Hi everyone, welcome to Kate Bonnie Country, and you can call me Kate. Thanks for stopping by. You might want to take a seat while I finish the DIY improvements on the basement grooming space. It took 12 days of actual labor over the course of two weeks to complete, so this will be a long video. I had to condense 20 hours of footage to create this video, and there are parts missing from when I forgot to turn the camera on, a battery depleted, or the memory card on the camera was full. You are seeing pictures of the space from before I started the remodeling process. Everything needed a coat of paint. The window and sink needed to be replaced. I also determined that I needed to build a non-load bearing wall to help safely contain the dogs during the grooming and a bookshelf to keep my grooming tools in arm's reach. I will play free use music in the background similar to what I listened to while completing the project, music credits will be given as the song begins. We are starting with the instrumental version of Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar. You already saw days one through three in another video. Just as a refresher, that involved pressure washing the walls and floors on day one, applying the first coat of paint on day two, and the second coat of paint on day three. I also spent some time visualizing and planning the space. Day three was also the day that I found and removed the snake that was in the basement. Day four was intended to consist of replacing the glass in the basement window and painting the window and door. That plan changed when I removed the old glass and realized that the original window frame from 1936 was eaten by termites and completely rotted. So I took my general dimensions, edited them onto the picture, and headed to the local hardware store to buy wood and plexiglass. Of course, I forgot to turn the camera back on until the window replacement was nearly completed. I framed the window, installed the plexiglass, and didn't remember the camera until I was scraping off the excess spray foam insulation. I had to go back to the hardware store to purchase some masonry bits so I could anchor the window frame into the brick. Drilling into the masonry will cause drill bits to overheat and break. I punched a hole in the bottom of a water bottle so I could squeeze water over the drill bit to keep it cool. I drilled 10 holes to anchor the window in. Drilling into masonry is a slow process and each hole took about 20 minutes to drill. And I actually finished anchoring it all on day 5. Replacing the window put me one day behind my original plans. But I did get the curtain rods hung. Day 5 saw me paint the window and door. Once again, I forgot to turn on the camera when I started, so we are picking up with starting on the door. This is the original tongue and groove door from 1936. It is in remarkably good shape and has a lot of character. The original door lock was completely rusted and seized, so I replaced it with a modern door lock that was made to look like the original. This was also a necessary upgrade as the original lock had a very simple mechanism and used a common skeleton key that could open any lock of this type. That's not very secure. The modern lock is more complex and uses a key that is visually similar to a skeleton key but actually has teeth cut to fit the pins in this lock. I painted the door frame using the clearance purple spray paint and originally painted the window frame and door solid white. However, that looked quite boring. So I decided to paint part of the window frame, the interior Z supports on the door, and the grooves between the boards on the outside of the door, all in a lovely dark purple. That required another trip to the hardware store for the appropriate type of paint. I went to the paint chips, grabbed the one with the great freeze on it, and picked out the darkest purple on that strip. It is not the exact same shade as the purple spray paint, but it is close enough that most people will only notice that the Z is ever so slightly lighter than the door frame itself. It was time to build the wall on day six. I had never built a wall before. Luckily, this is not a load-bearing wall. 
I actually wanted to leave a quarter inch open underneath the wall because the basement can collect water during heavy rains and I wanted to allow the water to pass under the wall on the way to the floor drain. I took my measurements and set about constructing the wall. I used an engineered wood called Luon instead of plywood as that tends to hold up better in damp conditions. I also ordered a second dehumidifier to help pull the excess moisture out of the basement air. If you've made it this far into the video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Cape Bonnie Country depends on the support of my viewers, and I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. Please feed the algorithm by writing DIY Basement in the comments. A well-fed algorithm pushes my videos out to more viewers and helps grow the channel. Thank you so much for your support. I did not finish the wall on day 6, so day 7 saw completion of the wall and building the bookcase. I completely forgot to take into consideration that the space is not set square. After 88 years of settling, the space is slightly askew. Even though I built the wall correctly, I had issues fitting it into the space and screwing it in place. Once it was secured, I started constructing the bookcase. I used 1x10 planks to construct the bookcase. I carefully measured to make sure that the bookcase fits snugly between the support pole and the new wall. I cut the sides first and then the shelves. And I used the Luan to create the backer. Of course, this space is not perfectly squared either. So I screwed the side of the bookcase into the support of the new wall and placed a leftover piece of plank under the other side to mostly level it out. Next, I started hanging the wallpaper. Even though this vinyl peel and stick wallpaper was advertised as appropriate for use on kitchen and bathroom walls, I quickly found out that the adhesive on the back did not want to hold in the humid conditions of the basement. Part of the issue was also air bubbles getting trapped underneath the paper. The majority of the problem was with the adhesive. So I decided to call it a day and pick up some spray adhesive before coming in to start day eight. Day eight was relatively a short day. I finished hanging the wallpaper. Even with the new spray adhesive, it did not want to stay in place and kept curling up. I decided that the wallpaper will do for now, but it will not be permanent. I ordered some vinyl tiles that will replace the wallpaper once I have taken care of the rest of the renovations and then I headed to City Hall to apply for my business license. Day 9 was also a short day. All I did was lay one layer of stain on the shelves and applied some wallpaper to the back so it fits into the space. When the new tile arrives, I may replace that wallpaper with it if I have enough left over. Otherwise, I may end up pulling the wallpaper off and just paint it to match the wall and trim. At this point, I was waiting for the bathtub to arrive. Day 10 consisted of adding a second coat of stain to the shelves within the bookcases and installing the dog run. This will give the animals a little freedom to safely run around while I clean up the space and wait on their owners to pick them up. The bathing sink arrived late in the afternoon of day 11. The package had gotten wet during shipping and the outer box disintegrated as the UPS driver pulled it off of the truck. So I had to check to make sure all the parts were present and to see if anything was damaged. There were minor dents and scratches and a spot of rust on one corner of the tub. I accepted the delivery and contacted Amazon about the damage. Since the sink is usable, I had no usable box to repack it in to return it, and I did not want to wait another month for a replacement to arrive, I accepted Amazon's offer of a 25% refund since it arrived in scratch and dent condition rather than brand new. Day 12 was sink installation. The fittings, faucet, and shower head that came with the sink 
did not fit the existing faucets. My shampoo dispensing sprayer also did not fit the new faucet. Rather than taking the parts to the hardware store and trying to piece together adapters, I decided that I will not use the bits that came with the sink. Instead, I'm going to use my existing plumbing. I do need to install anchor points in the tub, but that can be done when I bathe Tamir for the first time. For this final day of remodeling, I decided to wear my Basement Jesus t-shirt. I watch content from Angry Cops, and one of his video series is called This Old Crack House, in which he buys properties at auction, repairs and remodels them, and then either flips them or turns them into rentals. In his first house, the basement had collapsed, but there was still a portrait of Jesus displayed on the wall. Prayers to Basement Jesus became a custom after each visit to the house, and t-shirts were made. Throughout this process, I often found myself praying to Basement Jesus and thought it would be appropriate to finish off the space by wearing his t-shirt and thanking Basement Jesus for protecting me from my own ignorance. The snake I found was not venomous. I did not hurt myself while trying to wrestle the wall into place. There were many instances where I caught myself doing something dumb before I got hurt. Thank you, Basement Jesus, for watching over my renovations. This is the completed space. My first groom here to test it will be with Tanier. That video will go on this channel. I also scheduled a groom for a recently adopted Australian Shepherd that is in desperate need of a sanitary cut and will resume my shelter dog grooms. Those will be uploaded to my second channel, Kate's Country Critters, located on YouTube at Kate's Country Critters 24. See you next time.